Ukraine, being blamed for a surge in prices at shops and supermarkets around the country. The British Retail Consortium says that shop price annual inflation accelerated to 5.1% in August, up from a 4.5% the month before. That's the biggest jump it's ever recorded. Now, the biggest driver of these prices is fresh food, which is up 10.5%. The rise in shop and supermarket costs is contributing to wider inflation across the country, which some analysts predict could top 18% next year. Well, let's bring in Emma Birchley, who's at New Common Garden Market in South London. Emma, good morning to you. So you've got a nice bag of onions there next to you, but how much more are these things going to be costing people? They're going to be costing people so much more, and actually you don't need statistics and reports to tell you what we're all feeling every day, and that is that when you go and buy your food, it costs much more than it used to. Here, you couldn't get food much fresher. It's going to schools, it's going to restaurants, pubs, hospitality industry. But come a look, right, onions, up 10%. War in Ukraine is obviously an issue, but here in this country, it's um, drought, it's the heat wave. New crop potatoes, they're much smaller this year. They are up 40% in price. But come along here and look at the watermelon. So normally, these would cost Nature's Choice, which is where we are today, about £2. They are now costing them £5, and that obviously all gets passed on. So when it comes to stuff in this country, we're talking about the heat, the lack of rain, but, of course, the war in Ukraine is having a major impact. When it comes to things like watermelons, mangoes are the same. They're having to be flown in to be at their absolute best quality. And the, the air fuel costs are so high. And that is partly why we are feeling this real pinch and why everything is costing us so much more. No, we appreciate that. Thank you. All right, let's bring in the housing minister now uh, for what the government's going to be doing about this cost of living crisis. I'm pleased to say we're joined by Marcus Jones. Uh, Marcus Jones, good morning to you. So we've seen morning, the British Retail Consortium saying that uh, prices are going up in the shops. We know that inflation is likely to top uh, at least 12% next year. I mean, what is the government going to be doing to make sure that people can get through this crisis they're facing for the next few months? Well, it's a hugely challenging time for people and I don't underestimate how difficult it is. I can see that in my own constituency in Neaton where local people are struggling with the cost of living and where many businesses are also being affected particularly by the war in Ukraine and energy prices and the main thing that the government's done so far is to provide a £37 billion package of for people. Uh, that's £1,200 to the lowest paid uh, families, and they'll be receiving that uh, from now across into the autumn. Uh, then pensioners will be receiving uh, £850 uh, in support, uh, and every household will receive £400 uh, in support uh, during uh, this package that we have in the autumn. But I've absolutely no doubt that there is more to be done. Uh, people are finding things very, very difficult. And I know that both contenders in the leadership contest, and we're going to have a new uh, prime minister next week, both of those candidates have talked extensively about the cost of living. Uh, and I know uh, that that will be number one uh, in terms of their priorities when they take office. And certainly I know once we get back to Parliament next week, uh, it will be a discussion uh, that is being had constantly because people across the country will know from being constituency MPs uh, what a challenging time this is for the people they represent. Yes, yeah, so you accept that the package put forward by the person you're supporting uh, in his previous job for, for leadership, Rishi Sunak, is inadequate, so more will need to be done. Um, what about the idea of freezing prices at this point? You've seen that there is growing support. You've seen the front page of some of the newspapers this morning. Huge support for that idea across the country to freeze prices right now. Well, this has been a very fast-moving situation. Clearly, the energy price cap has now been announced 
to come into effect uh, during the autumn. Clearly, we've then got further announcements that are likely to be made uh, in January. Um, the support given is significant. It's £37 billion. That is a huge amount of money, but clearly... Going to be, uh, that that's will, going to be that inadequate, need... don't we, Mr Jones? We know... Well, we know, I, I've, we, I've we, already... And we've I've known already some, made... And we've known for some, some weeks that that's going to be inadequate, haven't we? I've, I've so already th that's made the question, very... why there's not more coming now. I'm I've already promised. made it very yeah. clear, Kamali, that more needs to be done. Uh, I think it's important that the current Prime Minister has given the opportunity to the new Prime Minister uh, to look at the situation and to make decisions accordingly uh, from the beginning of... Uh, from the taxpayer, uh, they will have uh, protection on their social rents uh, so that their uh, rent bill will be £300 less than it would have been next year. Yeah, and that £300, of course, will be very, very valuable to, to lots of people. But as you said, it's next year. There's a consultation that has to go through the process now. You know, £300 off their rent over the year coming next year is not going to help anyone whose bill's going up on the 1st of October. Well, clearly, it's important that we give people certainty and we give them reassurance, and that's what we've got to do going forward with any further package. I think people will be uh, reassured more when they start to receive the £37 billion that's coming out. Some of that has already started to be received by families, but the lion's share of that is going out across uh, the uh, autumn months. Uh, the electricity companies this month are starting... Uh, to uh, knock the uh, amount of money that we're providing off people's electricity bills and for those on prepayment meters, uh, they will have an amount credited each month uh, to make up that £400 we're providing. Uh, but I'm under no illusion whatsoever that more will need to be done and uh, I'm looking forward uh, to the Prime Minister coming in next week and I'm sure the new Prime Minister, whether that is Rishi or it's Liz, uh, will be very aware of the difficulties that people are going through and will start to set out how they're going to help people uh, across this very Thank you, Mrs. Thatcher. I want to thank you first of all for your initiatives that we meet on my way to Washington. Yes, you recalled that uh, the road to the agreement which we have come very close to signing the agreement on the elimination of two kinds of nuclear weapons was not an easy one, but we have covered this road together. I mean, all together, the Soviet Union, the United States, Great Britain, our allies and your partners. It's 21st century telling JD and Patrick, the showrunners, are very aware that the world has changed and that people want to feel included. We want kids to watch this and go, hey, that's me, I'm in that. So, in terms of girl power and. The curtain has come down on one of the world's most significant leaders. Uh, he was a pivotal figure at a defining moment.
Okay. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. 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 Nearly six months after the fall of Helsen, with winter approaching, there's been a surge in fighting. Why has the southern city, taken by Russia in the first few days of the invasion, become the latest focus of fighting? Strategically, Kherson is important in this war for two main reasons. It's a vital stepping stone for Russia if it plans to attack the strategic port of Odessa, 200 kilometers to the west. And when Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, Ukraine cut Crimea off from the national grid and also stopped vital supplies of fresh water. This explains Russia's focus on Zaporizhia, a major source of electrical power, and Kherson, which controls the supply of fresh water. So Russia will not want to lose Kherson and has been moving troops from the Donbass to reinforce its forces in the city. In response, Ukraine has blown up three strategically important bridges across the Dnipro River, linking Russian occupation forces with their resupply options, isolating the Russian soldiers and eroding their morale. Ukraine has also targeted ammunition depots, fast aircraft and military facilities in southern Crimea. However, to retake Kherson, you need either overwhelming numbers of troops or you need the element of surprise. The Ukrainians appear to have neither. But we should not underestimate the potential for the local population to assist expelling the Russian forces. So why mount an operation to liberate Kherson now? After six months of war, if Ukraine is to prevail, it needs to seize the initiative. President Zelensky also... type of question and it is a hypothetical question and I think we will need to see how Boris reacts uh, to not being the Prime Minister. Clearly different ex-Prime Ministers have reacted in different ways. David Cameron stepped down in 2016 and clearly Theresa May's uh, carried